In this video we're going to take a look at 3, which is the newly released machine from tier 1 of the Hack the Box starting point track. As usual, I'm already connected to the starting point VPN, I've booted up the machine, so we've got an IP address here, and I've also gone ahead and run the Nmap scan, so I ran this on the top 1000 ports, doing service numeration and default scripts, and we have the SSH port 22 and HTTP 80 open. There could be more ports open because I didn't scan all TCP ports, but let's just hope that we're right and submit to. Normally at this stage I would add this IP address to the etc host file alongside a domain like 3.htb so that we can just access that using the domain name rather than the IP address. However, in this case the next question is asking us what is the domain of the email address in the contact section so let's go to the website and just see did they use 3.htb which is the name of the machine or did they use something else. So we'll go through to the website, we can start having a look around, although we know that we're supposed to be looking at the contact section. But if we just scroll down a little bit, we'll see here we've got an email which is mail at the toppers.htb. So that is our domain, let's go and add it to the host file. So we're going to put in here the toppers.htb, let me grab that IP address again. And now, whenever we try to access the toppers.htb, it's going to redirect to that same place. So let's do HTTP, and we have the same website. So we could go and start having a look around that. Let's just go and answer this question, the toppers.htb. The next question is actually asking us about the host file that we just entered the domain to. So we'll just add this, etc hosts. And as it says here, this is the file that we can use to resolve host names to the IP addresses. So we'll submit that. We're then asked about the subdomain. So let's go and do some subdomain enumeration. I ran into some problems at this stage, which is pretty customary. So let me just show the problems that I ran into. I normally use fbuff for brute force in subdomains. And we're just setting fbuff here to use the colored output, and I'm going to give it a word list. I'm going to use setlists, which you can install with sudo apt get install setlists, or you can grab it from the GitHub repo. And then again, we can just have a look through, see what options we've got here. The subdomains are in discovery, so you can see here discovery, DNS, and then you can pick what length of a word list you want. So let's take the top 20,000 most common subdomains, and that's going to be the word list we're going to enumerate. We need to provide our URL, so we'll do HTTP the toppers hack the box and then here we're going to supply the host header so we want to say host is going to be and then we're going to fuzz the first word and then just put in the rest of the domain so the toppers dot hack the box this is our domain this is our top level domain either you know dot com or dot net or something like that and then here's the subdomain and we could have another subdomain as well so we'll try and run through this. Immediately we get a lot of output. So essentially what we want to try and do is work out what is going to be different about the response. Is it going to have a different response code? Is the length of the response going to be different? Or are there going to be some keywords on the page which we can filter by? Because sometimes all the responses will be the same length and the same code, but there might be a slightly different word on the page. So what I did here, I think I did, I tried both actually, I tried the status code and I tried filtering by size, so let's do size 11952, we run through that, you see we're not getting any output now, so we should just get some output once it's found something, and as you can see we didn't find anything. So what I did here was, went back to the question page, you can see that it's asking us for a subdomain which is two letters. So we've got two letters and then the toppers.htb. So we can use something like crunch. I was basically worried that the two letters somehow weren't in that list. So let's do, uh, let me do tldr crunch to get some example commands. So an example command, list of list words, length one to three, only lowercase characters. I think that's what I did. So crunch two two, and then like words.txt, a word, that's fine. 676, let's cut it out and see what it looks like. So there's all of our two letter words. So I basically tried the same thing. Let's run through this again, change the word list to word.txt. 
It's going to run through pretty quickly because we've only got 676 requests, but we don't actually get the response there either. So at this point, I moved over to GoBuster, which is another tool we can use to do this sort of stuff. You can see we've got a DNS mode, which is for subdomain enumeration. However, it's worth bearing in mind that whenever you set, up, whenever you have a subdomain, it can either be on a different IP address or it could be a virtual host. So you can see here vhost, where basically the subdomains are all on the same system, the same server, and a virtual host and setup is used to divert data to the relevant uh, server. So we need to use vhost essentially, that's what I'm trying to say there. So let's do gobuster and then we can do vhost-h to get up the options for this one as well. Quite similar to the directory busting mode. So we'll do gobuster, we'll do dash u http the toppers dot hack the box and we'll also supply our word list which is let's just try the word one and I've actually just realized there I forgot the mode so we need to say vhost we run through that and we don't get the response so again just another issue whereby the word list that I created didn't have numbers in it so let's do this again and let's supply the sec lists one so we'll do user share sec lists discovery dns subdomains top 20,000 run through this very quickly we get s3 the toppers dot hack the box we also get this gc dot underscore msdcs all right, so we've got a 404 status for this one because we need to go and add the subdomain to our host file. So we just add this in here, save it, and now we can go and try and access that. Let's also go and update this. So this was S3, the toppers, dot hack the box. So S3 is the Amazon Web Service, AWS, um, a bucket. So let me actually... Normally, I go straight over to hat tricks for these sort of things and look at what sort of commands we can run. However, I'm not too keen on from what I could find here on the hat tricks section for AWS. It gives you a lot of useful information, but it's more, it's not really giving you any commands, any, you know, it's, there's a lot of things to read here with not very many things to copy and paste, let's put it that way. Uh, so yeah, might be good for learning, but if you want just like a cheat sheet of things to try, let me open up this other link. You can see here we've got some different information about how we can run, well this is basic info, but down here we've got some basic commands. So you can see here, find subdomains, we've got some tools as well. Um, AWS tools, S3, basic commands. This is the sort of thing we're looking for. So once we've got AWS CLI installed, which you can install with sudo apps get install AWS CLI. Once we've got that installed, we'll be able to start running some of these commands. So you can see here we've got basics, we've got options to find S3 buckets, check in permissions and files, example attacks, etc. So that's a good one. Another one I saw here from Secure Layer 7 also gives you a lot of commands that you can try and run for different, uh, a lot of different tools as well. So you can see here S3 Scanner, S3 Inspector, S3 Bucket Finder, etc. I'll leave these links in the description so you can go through them in your own time. But if you see something like this, you don't know how to deal with AWS or S3 buckets, then this is the sort of thing that you need to go and look for to start enumerating the service. Now that we've got this site as well, what we could do is go and run GoBuster again. I'm going to do GoBusters, which is my alias to do the directory mode, where we just pass in a URL and then pass in, I normally just pass in some extensions to search for, like PHP, TXT, things like that. We'll leave that to start running. We could also run something like Nikto-host to see, does this come back with anything interesting, any information about the server? We can see here some Amazon request ID headers, uncommon headers. So we'll leave that to run. Let's go back and see what question we're being asked here. What is the service running on the discovered subdomain? So it is an Amazon S3 bucket. Which command line utility? We already discussed that. That's AWS CLI. 
What command is used to set up the AWS CLI installation? Okay, so we could go back to one of these pages. We could also open up the AWS help. Let's do AWS-H. Okay, so we pass in a command and then help. So AWS, let's just try help first of all. Now, I don't, I'm not a big fan of this output. You know that I like this TLDR app that somebody recommended to me in the past. Some uh, Somebody left a comment in the, one of my videos recommending this and I use it a lot. Um, so if we do AWS, TLDR, AWS, we've got some commands here. The first thing it says is configure. So that sounds like what we're looking for. Let's go back. AWS configure. What is the command used by the above utility to list all of the S3 buckets? Okay, what else do we have here? Does this mention it? It doesn't. But what we can do here is also drill down on those commands. So in the same way that we can do AWS S3 help and bring up this kind of annoying help menu to search through, we can also do TLDR AWS S3. So we can drill down to that even further and you can see the first thing that it gives us is AWS S3 LS bucket name, which is exactly what we've been asked. So we'll submit that. This server is configured to run files written in what web scripting language? So let's actually try and go through and run the command that it suggested, which was the ls command. We'll do AWS S3 ls and then we'll provide the bucket. So we can do S3 the toppers dot hack the box. Oh, not the roppers, although that's a good name as well. And we get this unable to locate credentials. So uh, let's let me show you what I did here. I ran AWS configure. I had no idea what these values were, so I just hit enter. Try again. Same issue. Now at this point, I assumed that basically we needed to try and find the credentials, so I went back to our directory busting, started having a look through some of these things. There's not actually really anything particularly interesting here, although let's just check this one. Health. So this tells us what services are available. But we've also got this shell as well, which is a 500. Let's try and connect to that. We go to shell, and this actually redirects to localhost 4566 on our local system. So I'm not 100% sure what this was about. I did go down a bit of a rabbit hole, which is never a great thing on a starting point machine. But um, essentially, the issue is we can configure the AWS service with some default credentials, not default, some filler credentials let's say, and if there's no credentials required that will allow us to get through, but there needs to be something in here, so just putting nothing wasn't good enough. We need to say like A, 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 and then if we try that again, it's looking a little bit better, it's not told us it needs to locate the credentials, although it's still struggling. And you can see there, so it could not connect to the endpoint URL. It's tried to go to the S3, to the actual Amazon web servers. And this is, that's not going to work. We need to use our endpoint URL as the toppers. So we'll do endpoint equals HTTP S3, the toppers dot hack the box. And there we go. We've listed the files in the directory. We now know that PHP is running on the server, so we can go and answer that question. PHP. And the final thing it wants is the root flag. So we're kind of left to do a bit of work on our own here. Let's go back to this AWS pen test book and have a look. We've got some example attacks, okay, ls sync. So we could download files. Maybe there's something in that index.php which is of interest. We could see here, check permissions and files, find S3 buckets, go back to our basic commands, and one of them is S3 CP. So we can actually copy a file from the bucket to our local destination, or we can also copy a local file to the S3 bucket, or we can move it as well. So let's go and try and put a shell on the server. We know it's running PHP, we could go to something like revshells.com, and get a PHP reverse shell. I normally just use a really basic PHP shell. And actually somebody asked me a question about this recently, why I use that basic shell rather than just going straight for a reverse shell. And essentially it's good
bit of troubleshooting. You see, sometimes you'll find whenever you're using some of these shells, look, we've got a lot of different PHP ones. You might find that one of those PHP shells doesn't work, or several of them don't work. And if you try to if you try to check for RCE by using one of these shells, you don't know whether the problem is the shell or the problem is elsewhere, i.e. the server's not vulnerable or you know something else going on. Whereas if you use the most basic shell possible, which works in nearly all PHP scenarios, if that doesn't work, you know the server's not vulnerable or there's some issue elsewhere. If it does work, great. Now you move on to try and the reverse shell and then if the reverse shell doesn't work you know it's not because you don't have command execution it's because there's something wrong with a shell or you know some other issue uh, so anyway that's 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 why I would normally just go for a really basic shell first of all I'm gonna do locate shell.php and grab this web shell this is really let's just see it's just literally PHP system gets commands so it's gonna take a get parameter off us and then it's gonna execute that and return the result so let me take a copy of this then. What did we need to do again? We need to... Okay, so our local file. All right, so I should just be able to repeat this command, this ls command, and instead I'm going to change that to copy. I'm going to put in the local file. Run that, and we get upload. Okay, that looks good. Let's list the directory. And now we can see that shell has been added. So let's go back to the toppers, dot hit the box. Let's do shell.php. No output, which is what we'd expect, but if we do question mark cmd equals ls, now we list the files in the directory. So we've got command execution. Now if we wanted a reverse shell, we could literally just paste the reverse shell command in here, set up a listener on our system, and that would connect back. I'm not going to do that. Let me just go over to burp, and instead I'm going to right-click this request, send it to the repeater, I like to do this because it just makes it a little bit easier to keep changing commands. We can do who am I, send, and it gives you a nicer output as well. Let's actually try ls. See, it's given us the output in lines rather than all in the same line. Okay, so we'll do ls dot dot slash. I couldn't uh, process that because we need to URL encode the space, so we'll do that again. And you can see one directory back, we've got the flag. So instead of ls dot dot slash, we'll do cat dot dot slash flag dot txt and there we go there's our root flag we'll submit that notice that the root flag doesn't have it's not wrapped in the hcb flag this time but there we go that's how we can enumerate an s3 bucket uh, we've listed the files we've copied over a shell and we've used that to get command execution on the server so I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.